Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture, Unit 1, Kinematics. The section is Projectile Motion Lab, Part 2. Here's a projectile motion question that is in the format of an FRQ on the AP Physics 1 exam. Here you can read the scenario. First, I want to provide you the first hint. Always read the question first. Once you know what you're looking for, then you could go back to the scenario and look for the information that you need. Here, question one says to derive an equation using the vertical coordinate y of the sphere as a function of x, velocity naught, and the physical constant as appropriate. The physical constant that they're referring to is like gravity, which is g. It's always constant at 9.8. Notice that the information from the scenario can be ignored these are the only important part. Ball launch it horizontally from a location above the grass with initial velocity v naught in the x direction. Your positive velocity is to the right and downwards. You can see the picture it labeled the direction. Here when it's asked to derive an equation for the vertical coordinate y, it's asking make sure you simplify the question to something that you know. Basically, Describe the projectile motion with an equation using y equals to something, and that something can only be made up of the variables x, y naught, and g. y naught stands for the initial velocity. So to approach this, you want to use one of your kinematics equation. This is relating the vertical positioning with velocity and acceleration. So you're going to use your quadratic, your quadratic kinematics equation. So here we can see how some terms go to zero. Y naught goes to zero because it starts from the ground. The velocity naught, which is the initial velocity in the y direction, goes to zero because there is no initial vertical velocity because the scenario says launch it horizontally. So those two things go to zero. Then you simplify to y equals one half acceleration in the y direction t squared but we know that the acceleration in the y is g because gravity is the vertical acceleration that the object experience so it can be simplified into y equals one half g t squared the issue arises that you cannot use the t value because t is not given in the question so you have to rewrite t as something else so we are going to use another equation here and solve for t. I'm going to be using the x version of the quadratic equation for kinematics. And I saw that the starting x value goes to 0 and the acceleration in the x value goes to 0. Okay? Because it starts from re it starts from 0 0 and there is no acceleration in the x direction. Simplify it, x is equal to the velocity naught in the x direction, so that's initial velocity in the x direction, times time. Divide v naught x to both sides. You should now get t is equal to x divided by v naught x. This can now be substituted in here for t, and you are done with the deviation. y is in terms of a physical constant x and v naught the second part of the lab um, sets up the scenario saying alejandro has all this equipment as well as a sheet of carbon paper the way carbon paper works is that if you put carbon paper on top of a white plain paper and an object touches it it's going to leave a mark on it the experimental apparatus here shows what material he has Part B asks us to design an experiment procedure that Alejandro can use to test the claim that y is proportionally to x squared. In this table, you're going to list the quality and associated symbols that would be measured in your experiment. Also, please note that you do not have to fill up all the rows. Then also, it's going to ask you to describe the overall procedure. The hint here is that you actually want to go to the data part of the question and see what they record and use that answer to answer this question. The AP Physics 1 FRQ will always give you the data. They never ask you to compute the data yourself. So if you look at part C, 
here it is. The chart was already filled out. What they recorded was the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. And they give you the scenario here. It explains how that data came to be. And they asked this question. So if you take a look, this is the data they collected. So you come back to this question and now fill it out. Okay, what did they measure? Well, they measured the initial height above the floor to the sphere, which is Y, or you can use H. Sometimes you can use it as delta H, up to you. And the equipment to measure any distance, you can use a meter stick that was provided in the situation. Also, you want the horizontal distance from the launch point to the location where their sphere hits the ground. That can be delta X or D, which stands for distance. That can also be measured by the meter stick. Notice that these qualities to be measured, the symbols and the equipment all come from this because it actually told us. Once we have this, now we can go back because it's going to ask us for the procedure. The procedure is the hard part that you have to remember. Okay. So the procedure here is, first of all, they move the launcher to the maximum height possible on the stand. With the sphere in the launcher, they use the meter stick to measure how high the floor is to the, bo to the bottom of the sphere. Also mark the spot on the floor below the center of the sphere. So this is going to be the height value that they're referring to that, re that is recorded on the chart. Okay, make sure you have a step in the procedure to give you the data that you want. Three, you want to place the shoe sheets of paper at a location where their sphere could hit. Then you want to launch the sphere so that the mark is made on the paper when the sphere hits the sheet of paper. If the sphere misses that sheet of paper because you put it in the long location, repeat the experiment, just move the sheet around. Then you're going to now mark because the location in which the sphere right hits or travels and hits the mark on the paper, that is going to be your delta X. That is your distance okay, from the launch. Now, always have the last step repeating this with different launch heights or in this case with something different. So in this case, it would be the launch height. The reason why is because it helps reduce experimental error in the data collection. This is always required to get points. The more trials you have, the better accurate of the data that you record. That's why you always want to repeat it. Okay, sometimes you want to say repeat step two through five or step whatever to whatever, like say 10 times. Okay, this will help reduce error. All right, because if you look here, they did it five times, one, two, three, four. No, they did it four times, okay? As, as you do it more, you're going to get better and better uh, measurements, all right? So after the procedure, the next part here, it says the structure wants to use the teacher's data to determine, right? The student wants to use the teacher's data, okay? They would never ask you to compute your own data to determine whether the claim the y is proportionally to x squared. This part is basically, can you graph the data? All right. What you have to do when you graph the data is that here I graph the what the question wants. They want me to show an x squared value for the input and the vertical displacement or y for my output. So I'm graphing this. No, I'm graphing this as my x value, x axis, and I'm doing this as my y axis here, okay? If you did it the other way, I have the other one here, okay? This one, the second one, is when I graph this as my x axis and this as my y axis. The vertical displacement is always your output, all right? So from here, we can now analyze it, okay? So I have the data here, all right? This is just on the Excel sheet, but you're really just looking at, 
this part. Okay, this is your x axis and this is your y axis. Okay, then it's going to ask do the data in the above structure claim that y is proportionally to x squared? Okay, when they ask this and they mark and when they mark um, yes or no, you do not get a point for this. You only get a point for the explanation, right? So I wrote yes, but the explanation is where you get the points. I said yes, and I drew a line, and I saw that it was linear. I said because the x squared is linearly proportionally to the y from the graph being a straight line. That is how I explain that y is proportionally to x squared. The last part here is when they ask you now, they want to change the scenario so that it has a different launch speed that is less than the original V naught. So it's asking how do these graphs change now that your velocity that you use is less. So answer, first of all, your velocity in the X direction will just be lower. So here, let's say this is the value of five meters per second. This is now three meters per second. It says it indicates that it would be a smaller magnitude in the horizontal velocity. And the slope is still zero to indicate that there is no horizontal acceleration. For the vertical velocity, it is the same. The vertical velocity intercept will not change. The slope here will always still be 9.8 to show that the acceleration in the y direction is still g, which is 9.8. Okay, so there you go. This is a typical question on the AP Physics 1 exam to reflect an experimental design that walks you through a lab that's on the FRQ.